Welcome to this EKE 100 configuration video 4 about how to use the display interface to configure the EKE 100 as a super heat controller for one ETS 12C stepper motor valve. The EKE 100, 1V and 2V versions with built-in display can be configured by using the display interface. The display interface configuration is split into five small videos, which includes video 1, showing basic navigation between the different setting modes, including using the keypads and understanding the display readings. Video 2, showing how to do basic settings, including configuring the EK100 as a superheat controller or a valve driver. Video 3, showing how to configure the EK100 as a valve driver for one stepper motor valve. Video 4, showing how to configure the EK100 as a superheat controller for one stepper motor valve, including configuration of one pressure transmitter and one temperature sensor. And video 5, showing how to configure the EK100, allowing you to manually operate a valve. In these videos, we'll give you important configuration tips, ensuring your safe and reliable system operation. So go ahead and check out the EK100 display interface configuration video which will meet your needs. In this EK100 display interface configuration video 4, we will show you how to unlock the EK100 so that you can configure it, how to set the EK100 as a super heat controller for a stepper motor valve, and how to select a refrigerant. We will also show you how to set the super heat temperature range, how to select the pressure transmitter, and how to set the pressure range of the pressure transmitter. Finally, we will show you how to select the temperature sensor, how to do the EK100 valve configuration by selecting a stepper motor valve, how to set the EK100 2V version for one valve operation only, and how to log it again after completing the setting. It is very important to ensure that the EK100 is correctly mechanically and electrically installed before starting up the EK100 and starting to configure it. The EKE 100 should always be installed and connected to other equipment according to the guidelines given in relevant literature, such as the installation and user guides for the EKE 100 and other equipment. Please note that there are free EKE 100 online installation videos available to ensure a safe and reliable installation and system operation. All EKE 100 display interface configuration examples are done with the EKE 100 located in a demo rack, but the configuration procedure is the same for the EKE 100 located in the refrigeration system. We demonstrate the EKE 100 display interface configuration by using the EKE 100 2V version as seen here. Most configuration procedures and the navigation structure are identical for the EKE 100, 1V and 2V versions. However, whenever there are any deviations, then we will highlight this during the configuration videos. So let us start using the display interface. The basic uses of the EKE 100 display interface and the EKE 100 basic settings are explained in the EKE 100 online display interface configuration videos 1 and 2. As mentioned in these videos, then the EK100 always starts in home mode, as shown here with HO. As also mentioned, then before you can configure the EK100, you first need to unlock it. This is done as follows. From the home mode, press the arrow down key to get to the basic settings, specified as SET. Press the enter key to access the main switch, specified as CR12. Press the enter key again, which will set the main switch as OFF, as seen here. The EKE 100 is now unlocked. Press the exit key to move one step back in the navigation structure so that you can start the EKE 100 configuration. Please refer to the EKE 100 online display interface configuration videos 1 and 2 and the EKE 100 user guide for details about how to read the display, understand the settings, navigation structure and understand the parameter abbreviations. You can now start to configure the EKE 100. Unlocking the EK100 is shown in the following sequence. The first step in the EK100 configuration is to set it as a superheat controller. We will in this example do the setting for valve A, and it is done as follows. 
From the main switch CR12 mode, press the arrow down key to access the operation mode A, specified as ACTR. Press the enter key to access the available operating modes. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to get the value corresponding to superheat control. As seen from the operation mode overview shown here, then the value should be set as zero for superheat control, here specified as HA control. Press the enter key to confirm the value and return to the ACTR mode. Please refer to the K100 user guide for details about how to read the display understand the navigation structure, and understand the parameter abbreviations. Setting the K100 as a superheat controller is shown in the following sequence. The next step is then to select a suitable valve A refrigerant. In this example, we select R290, and it is done as follows. From the ACTR mode, press the arrow down key to access the valve A refrigerants, specified as ARFG. Press the enter key to access the available refrigerants. You can see the different refrigerant types and related values in the overview shown here. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to find and select the needed refrigerant. Select 25 corresponding to R290. Press the enter key to confirm the value and return to the ARFG mode. Please refer to the EKU100 user guide for details about how to read the display, understand the navigation structure, and understand the parameter abbreviations. Selecting R290 as a refrigerant is shown in the following sequence. We should then set the valve A superheat temperature range in the EKU100. We will in this example set a superheat temperature range of 5 to 10K and it is done as follows. From the ARFG mode, press the arrow down key to access the minimum superheat temperature for valve A, specified as ASLO. Press the enter key to access the available temperatures. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to set the minimum superheat temperature to 5, corresponding to 5K. Press the enter key to confirm the temperature value and return to the ASLO mode. Press the arrow down key to access the maximum superheat temperature, specified as ASHI. Press the enter key to access the available temperatures. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to set the maximum superheat temperature to 10, corresponding to 10K. Press the enter key to confirm the temperature value and return to the ASHI mode. Please refer to the EKE100 user guide for details about how to read the display understand the navigation structure, and understand the parameter abbreviations. Setting the superheat temperature range in the EK100 is shown in the following sequence. The next step is then to select a suitable valve A pressure transmitter. We will in this example select an AKS32R, and it is done as follows. From the ASHI mode, press the arrow down key to access the available pressure transmitters for valve A, specified as AC50. Press the enter key to access the available pressure transmitters. You can see the different pressure transmitters and related values in the overview shown here. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to find and select the needed pressure transmitter. Select one corresponding to AKS 32R. Press the enter key to confirm the value and return to AC50 mode. Please refer to the EK100 user guide for details about how to read the display, understand the navigation structure, and understand the parameter abbreviations. Selecting the AKS 32R pressure transmitter is shown in the following sequence. We should then set the valve A pressure range in the EK100. We will in this example set a pressure range of minus 1 to 12 bar, and it is done as follows. From the AC50 mode, press the arrow down key to access the minimum pressure for valve A, specified as AC57. Press the enter key to access the available pressures. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to set the minimum pressure to minus 1, corresponding to minus 1 bar. 
Press the Enter key to confirm the pressure value and return to the AC57 mode. Press the arrow down key to access the maximum pressure, specified as AC58. Press the Enter key to access the available pressures. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to set the maximum pressure to 12, corresponding to 12 bar. Press the Enter key to confirm the pressure value and return to the AC58 mode. Please refer to the EK100 user guide for details about how to read the display, understand the navigation structure, and understand the parameter abbreviations. Setting the pressure range of minus 1 to 12 bar in the EK100 is shown in the following sequence. The next step is then to select a suitable valve A temperature sensor. We will in this example select the PT1000 and it is done as follows. From the AC58 mode, press the arrow down key to access the available temperature sensors for valve A, specified as AC59. Press the enter key to access the available temperature sensors. You can see the different temperature sensors and related values in the overview shown here. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to find and select the needed temperature sensor. Select 24 corresponding to PT1000. Press the Enter key to confirm the value and return to the AC59 mode. Please refer to the EKE100 user guide for details about how to read the display, understand the navigation structure, and understand the parameter abbreviations. Selecting the PT1000 temperature sensor is shown in the following sequence. We then have to do the EKE100 valve A configuration by selecting the ETS12C stepper motor valve as valve A, and it is done as follows. From the AC59 mode, press the arrow down key to access the valve A configuration, specified as AJ00. Press the enter key to access the available valves. You can see the different suitable valves and related values in the overview shown here. Press the arrow up or arrow down keys to find and select the needed valve. Select 29 corresponding to an ETS-12C valve. Press the Enter key to confirm the value and return to the AJ00 mode. Please refer to the EKE100 user guide for details about how to read the display, understand the navigation structure, and understand the parameter abbreviations. Selecting the ETS-12C stepper motor valve as part of the EKE100 valve A configuration is shown in the following sequence. Since we in this video configure the EK100 2V version to be used only with one ETS-12C valve, then we need to set the valve B as not used. This is done as follows. From the AJ00 mode, press the arrow down key to access the operation mode B, specified as BCTR. Press the Enter key to access the available operating modes. As seen from the operation mode overview shown here, then the value should be set as 9 for valve B to be not used. Press the arrow up arrow down keys to get the needed value. Select 9 corresponding to valve B not being used. Press the Enter key to confirm the value and return to the BCTR mode. Press the arrow up key to return to the main switch CR12 mode. Please refer to the EK100 user guide for details about how to read the display, understand the navigation structure, and understand the parameter abbreviations. Setting the EK100 2V version for one valve operation is shown in the following sequence. After you have completed the configuration of the EK100, you need to log it again. This is done as follows. From the CR12 mode, press the Enter key to change the OFF setting seen here. Press the arrow UP key to change the setting from OFF to ON. Press the Enter key to confirm the ON setting and return to the CR12 mode. The EK100 is now locked and ready for operation. Please refer to the EK100 online display interface configuration videos 1 and 2 and the EK100 user guide for details about how to read the display, understand the settings, navigation structure and understand the parameter abbreviations. Locking the EK100 is shown in the following sequence. You have now completed the display interface configuration video 4 for the EK100 Superheat controllers and valve drivers. So now, 
you know how to unlock the EK100 so that you can configure it. You know how to set the EK100 as a superheat controller for a stepper motor valve. You know how to select a referent. You know how to set the superheat temperature range. You know how to select a pressure transmitter. You know how to set the pressure range of the pressure transmitter. You know how to select the temperature sensor. You know how to do the EK100 valve configuration by selecting a stepper motor valve. You know how to set the EK100 2V version for one valve operation only. And you know how to lock the EK100 again after completing the setting. All this ensuring a correct and safe system operation. Please check out the other online videos about EK100 display interface configuration. Have a look at the other online learnings about the Danfoss EKE100 superheat controllers and valve drivers. Thanks for watching.